and you found freedom for the people of Wales. Smiles and relief, not quite the end of lockdown yet, but today easing of the rules means they're now allowed to meet outdoors, travel about and even take staycations. It's wonderful, I have to say. We both work in the NHS, so the last year has been a bit of a struggle. So to get away, it's just been so exciting to get, a, get away today, it's lovely. Also tonight, almost 30 million have now been vaccinated and the over 70s could soon get a booster to protect them from any new variants. The world condemns more violence in Myanmar on the deadliest day since the military takeover. And following in his father's footsteps, Mick Schumacher makes his Formula One racing debut. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelo. Good evening. After almost three months in lockdown, Wales has become the first UK nation to lift travel restrictions within its borders. It's been a long time coming, but today people are also able to meet friends and family outside, take part in some sports and enjoy a break in self-contained accommodation. There are, of course, some rules still in place, but as Neil Connery now reports, these first steps out of lockdown were a welcome relief for many. Rolling into this caravan and camping park on the Welsh coast for a long-awaited taste of freedom, as Wales becomes the first UK nation to lift travel restrictions within its borders as the road out of lockdown gets underway. It's wonderful, I have to say. We both work in the NHS, so the last year has been a bit of a struggle. So to get away, it's just been so exciting to get, a, get away today. It's lovely. And it's dry. And the sun's going to come out apparently as well at some point, which would be fabulous. After a lockdown winter, there's no time to waste. I just feel for the other people in the country that haven't got the movement as, as well as we have down here in Wales. But uh, time will come and uh, everyone will be able to do what they want to do sooner or later. For the site's owner, there's relief at the welcome arrivals. To see caravans rolling here today is great. It's been a very difficult year for us and indeed it has for everyone. We fully appreciate that, you know, and um, it, it, it's, it's great. We just hope that we can have a good summer to make up a little bit for what we've lost over the last year. As well as the stay local rule being scrapped in Wales, up to six people from two different households can now meet socially outdoors. Organised outdoor sports activities for under 18s can also go ahead and holidays at home have returned so long as you can stay in self-contained accommodation. But Wales' first minister told me travel in and out of the country remains restricted and had this message for anyone considering heading there. Please visit Wales, but do it later. Uh, on the 12th of April, the UK government currently plans to lift some travelling restrictions in England, and if that is the case, we will lift them in Wales as well. And we're very keen to welcome people back to Wales but to do it safely uh, and at the right time. On the beach at New Quay in West Wales, families were making the most of the lifting of some of the COVID-19 restrictions. But the Welsh Government is urging everyone to continue to do all they can to help keep the virus in check. Neil Connery, ITV News. Well, people in England have another 24 hours to wait until lockdown restrictions begin to be relaxed. Today, Boris Johnson said he was aware of the prospect of rising coronavirus infection rates, but saw absolutely nothing in the data to halt the loosening of the rules. On top of that, the government has also said that booster jabs aimed at protecting people from new variants could be available for some as early as September. And today, the number of people who've had first jabs reached nearly 30 million. Our political correspondent David Wood has this report. It's been a busy Saturday service at Salisbury Cathedral's vaccine hub, albeit with a quick pause to rejoice as John Conlin was given the centre's 25,000th jab. The numbers of people who've had both vaccine doses is increasing fast across the country. Well done, Francis. Oh, thank you. But on the horizon is the possibility of a third this autumn, at least for some, as ministers prepare to roll out boosters to protect the most vulnerable against new variants. Current vaccines are being tweaked. 
It's a complex process, but it's not as difficult as developing the vaccine in the first place. And some of these vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, which use a little bit of genetic material from the virus, are actually partic particularly adaptable, but they can all be tweaked. Northern Ireland's first minister is the latest politician to give the vaccine the thumbs up as she received hers this morning. I'm able to come here this morning because I'm very proud to say I'm in the over 50 category uh, and I'm able to get my vaccine today and uh, I hope everyone takes the opportunity to get their vaccine so that as a society we can move forward. England will move forward out of lockdown on Monday. Outdoor sport resumes and groups of up to six can meet outside. The Prime Minister has told his party's conference he's not just counting down to a haircut next month. I'm going to be able to go down the street and cautiously, but irreversibly, I'm going to drink a pint of beer in the pub. And as things stand, I can see absolutely nothing in the data to dissuade me from continuing along our roadmap to freedom. <laughs> But from Poland, a warning of the risks of a third wave. Police crack down on lockdown breakers as the country's health service starts to buckle. They're doing the same in France too as cases rise there, leading to calls for tougher border controls here. We are concerned about the current situation. I mean, it's only about 1% of those who are coming into the UK who are being subjected to hotel quarantine, for example. And we don't seem to have the really thorough process of checking on people when they come into the UK that's necessary. For now then, the route back to the pub is on course. But before pints can be pulled again, the vaccine needs to keep winning the race against emerging variants. And David is here now. So, David, a third wave breaking across Europe. Is the government here thinking about taking any action on this? It's certainly looking at it. I'm told tonight everything is under review. But what the government really doesn't want to do is put France and countries in a similar position on the so-called red list, which would force arrivals from those countries into 10 days mandatory hotel quarantine. And the reason for that is, is because with international travel and holidays banned for us at the moment. Mainly it's hauliers coming in here from those countries, bringing essential goods like food for us. So they're already exempt from red list restrictions. So as I understand it, what the government is considering more seriously is some sort of testing regime for those people coming in from those countries like France. You may remember, actually, at the end of last year, when we had the second wave taking its grip on our shores, France introduced a similar system. But I think as long as there is the trend of increasing cases in parts of the European Union, pressure will increase on the Prime Minister from scientists and opposition party uh, members to do more to blockade this country from the third wave reaching our shores. Mm, OK, David Wood, thank you very much. Nicola Sturgeon has questioned Alex Salmond's fitness to return to frontline politics in Scotland with a new party. The SNP leader raised what she called the appropriateness of his return to public office, given the concerns that have been raised about his behaviour. But she added it was for voters to judge and decide. The United Nations say more than 100 people have been killed in Myanmar by security forces on the bloodiest day yet of protests against last month's military coup. It says some of the victims were young people and children, and it's demanded that those responsible must be held to account. But despite worldwide condemnation, the violence continued throughout the day and is included in Graham Stothard's report. <laughs> As thousands of soldiers were on parade in the nation's capital, their colleagues on the streets opened fire, unleashing bullets and batons. Scores of people have been reported killed, including children, marking the deadliest day since the beginning of the coup nearly two months ago. The violence received international condemnation. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab tweeted saying today's killing of unarmed civilians, including children, marks a new low. We will work with our international partners to end this senseless violence, hold those responsible to account and secure a path back to democracy. <laughs> the European Union said it will stay engraved as a day of terror and dishonour. <laughs> There have been protests since the army seized power from the elected government on the 1st of February. They claim there were voting irregularities. The longer the violence goes on, the more brutal it gets, with the global outcry doing nothing to stop hundreds of lives being lost. Graham Stothard, ITV News. 
Motor Racing World Champion Lewis Hamilton will not start tomorrow's first Formula One race of the season on pole. He was beaten by nearly half a second by Max Verstappen. But there was another more poignant story at qualifying in Bahrain today. The son of the great Michael Schumacher, Mick Schumacher, was making his F1 debut. As Chris Scudder now reports. The opening race of a new season and for the first time in nine years, a Schumacher back in Formula One. Mick, son of legendary former champion Michael driving for the Haas team in his debut season. 22-year-old Mick is the same age as his dad was in his first season 30 years ago. And what a legacy to follow. Michael won the world title seven times, but will be watching his son incapacitated from home, having not been seen in public since a 2013 skiing accident, which almost took his life. Young Mick is the current Formula 2 champion, but his new Haas cannot live with the fastest Formula 1 cars. He was knocked out of qualifying in the first session and will start tomorrow from last but one place. Defending champion Lewis Hamilton will hope to overtake Michael Schumacher with an eighth world title this year, but he has a rival and competition that he didn't have last season. Max Verstappen came flying through to take Red Bull's first pole for eight years. Bull garage into raptures. Hold position, Max. Hold position, four tenths, mate. Fantastic work. Oh, finally, mate. That lap was good. <laughs> it could be quite a season. Chris Scudder, ITV News. Rugby and earlier today, Wales finally got their hands on this season's Six Nations trophy. <laughs> The squad celebrated in a COVID-secure delayed ceremony, finally lifting the silver this afternoon following the defeat of France by Scotland last night. And finally for this evening, some of the world's most famous landmarks were plunged into darkness tonight, marking Earth Hour, an annual campaign to draw attention to environmental issues. Well, this was Hungary's Budapest. This is Red Square in Moscow followed, of course, by the Eiffel Tower. And finally, here in Westminster. Well, uh, that's it for this evening. But just before we go, here's a quick reminder that clocks go forward one hour tonight at one o'clock, making it two o'clock and signifying the start of British summertime. But from me and all the weekend team, have a good sleep. Bye bye.